Oh no, we tipped it over. Hey everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out this Dreo PTC fan heater. I did receive the sample directly from Dreo, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in the space heater or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. This is available in gold and white. You'll see on the retail box and packaging, we have a nice basic graphic image of the heater. And on this side of the box, you'll see clearly which color unit you have. In our case, we have gold and everything repeats itself again on the other side and on the very back of the box you will find Dreo's customer service and contact information right there now let's go ahead let's open it up and see what's inside here are all the contents first up we have our product literature consisting of a full user guide and manual as well as some safety information so please be sure to review that before use on the back side you'll find a quick start guide with everything you need to get up and running moving right along we have the heater itself at the top you'll find our control panel with all of our touch buttons Looking at it from the front, we got our gold ring at the top, Dreo's logo and branding at the bottom, then our heater core in the middle there with our metal mesh. Here's a quick peek at the side. Here's the back side. This is plastic. You'll see the fan in there. We also have a nice built-in grip handle at the top. Very convenient and easy. This is super portable, lightweight, great to carry to and from the office, move around your house rooms, things along those lines. Integrated power cord there. There's a quick peek at the base. You'll notice on the back side, the temp sensor there. Here's a peek at the other side. Now we're back to the very beginning. Now let's go ahead, let's plug it in and try it out. All right, we have the unit plugged in and you'll see as soon as you have power to the unit, you'll have that indicator light, looks like a power cord there. Now let's turn the unit on and go over the control. So we gotta press the power button, boots right up. We have four additional buttons to look at. The first one's gonna be our menu mode button here. So we can cycle through the different options. First up with the fan icon, so it's just fan only. Then we have our three heat settings to look at, one, two, or three. One's gonna be 1000 watts, two's gonna be 1300 watts, three is gonna be 1500 watts. We can press it again, we'll be in eco mode where we can set our ambient room temperature. So once it's at this temperature for the device, it will shut off after 30 seconds and it'll stay off until the temperature dips below that value and it will fire back up. So it's your eco setting kind of an auto setting too there. So that's our first button. We can also hold down that menu mode button for a couple of seconds to mute the control so you no longer have to hear any noise if you want to mute the heater. Then we have our plus and minus that we use to change the settings we just looked at. You'll see we have this little lock option here. We can hold down both of those buttons, the minus and our timer settings for child lock. And lastly, we have our timer. So we can just toggle the timer from one hour all the way up to 12 hours or back down to zero to turn it off. But if your heater's on, you can have it run that will shut itself off automatically. When shopping for a space heater, it's important to consider the safety features that the unit is offering. In this case, we have a couple of key safety features to go over. The first one is that this space heater is equipped with automatic 24 hour shut off. This is great in case you forget about your space heater and leave it on. No matter what, it will shut off after 24 hours. I do wanna point out this is not enabled by default. So if you wanna have it enabled, just make sure the unit's plugged in. Don't have it powered on. You wanna be in this standby mode here. And you hold down the timer button for three seconds. And now it'll flash on or off. So in this case, we just turned it on. And now we have 24 hour shut off enabled right there. The next one is tip over protection. This does have built in tip over protection. If we tip this unit over, which we'll do here. So let's turn it on. Let's do heat setting one. Watch what happens as we just knock it over here. Oh no, we tipped it over. P4 flashes on the screen, you hear the beeping, and now the unit is shutting itself down. It takes, I'd say, 20 seconds or so, so we can watch this, but it will shut itself off on its own. So if you have a lot of pets, kids, maybe you're just clumsy, I don't know, but whatever it is in your environment, earthquakes even, Whatever could shake or knock it over, it's nice to have this feature built in too. So if you're seeing P4, that's the tip over protection kicking in, nothing to worry about there. Also, this does have built in overheat protection, but they don't specify what internal temp the unit gets to, but it's nice to know that it is aware of its temperature as well. So it's not going or shouldn't overheat for you. And again, it will shut itself off. If you see that, that's gonna be code F F on your display. So instead of P4, it'll be FF right there. 
So units off, not even hot or warm anymore. You'll even see the displays off, which brings me to another point with this unit. This isn't a safety feature, but another key feature of this heater is after one minute of use, the display will shut off automatically. So if you're worried about having this maybe on your nightstand or in a room or something and it's dark and you wanna be sleeping, just give the unit about one minute and the display will shut itself off. So now let's talk about this heater spec. So the first thing we're gonna look at is decibels to see how loud this unit is. Now keep in mind, there aren't any different fan speed settings. We just have the different heat control options and temperature settings. So it's gonna run at the same constant speed rate, whatever you wanna call it. So in this case, we peaked at 56.1 decibels. So I'd say that's very quiet. Yes, it's still moving air and making noise, but it's not gonna be unbearable. It's not gonna be a jet engine or anything like that. You'll know that there's a space heater on in the room if it's next to you at your desk, nightstand, things like that, but you can still talk over it, take your phone calls, do any of that stuff without any issue. So we peaked at 56.1 decibels for our max readout. So how hot does a space heater get? Well, we've benchmarked quite a few space heaters using this handy dandy tool right here, but the top has since started to melt. That's how hot some of these get. But with this test, just holding it up here with the highest heat setting, we peaked at 164.89 degrees Fahrenheit. So right at 165 degrees. Now compared to some of the competition out there, assuming these results are truly accurate, I'd say we're in the middle of the pack here in regards to heat. We've had some peak in that 200, 220 degree range, but this is hot. You wouldn't wanna be, you know, right there that close to it. It is bearable, it's not gonna be in the world, but you wanna be further away. It is gonna throw out a lot of nice warm air for you. Using one of our new temperature sensors here, we have this one up close as well, blowing the air in. That's showing that we're at 132, 133 degrees Fahrenheit now, and that's still going up. So just kind of give you a couple different data points. This is gonna be definitely a space heater for a smaller space, office desk, nightstand, smaller room, a bathroom, things along those lines. That's where a unit like this will really excel. So now let me show you my final thoughts after using this space heater. Here's what you should know. So 1500 watt space heaters, there's a bunch of them out there. Honestly, they're a dime a dozen in my opinion. But this one stands out on the market because it's very competitively priced to that competition, but the design's completely different. It's actually had some attention to detail with the gold aesthetic and finish to it. Most out there look very similar to each other following that boxy, uh, squarish, rectangular design with just a knob or two up at the top, kind of those old fashioned dial controls. This one for about the same price has touch controls up at the top and we have a built-in display. So I really like what we're getting value-wise with this unit. Sure, it's gonna perform very similar to the other units out there in regards to noise level, how hot it gets, that sort of thing. But it really comes down to at this price point and within this market, how does the device function? What design elements are there or not there? So in this case, this is a kind of a step up in the competition, rounded design, touch controls, built-in display, and it's really not costing that much more. So that's really what it comes down to. Which one do you like best? And do you have a preference? Do you like the dials? Would you rather have touch controls? Do you need a display? That's really only something you can decide.